Federal government and partners strategize to end HIV AIDS on the continent. Promoting school hygiene is the focus of a program in Kebbi State. These and more with me, Naja Atutijani on Panorama. Stay tuned. Reducing new HIV infections and reaching key populations with life-saving treatments remain great challenge which must be surmounted if the world must end AIDS by 2030, Basi Taipang reports. HIV prevalence among key populations stands at 11%, about eight times higher than the prevalence rate in the general population. This export say is a major setback in ending the pandemic in Nigeria and at the global level. Anything against this backdrop that we have gathered here today to address the needs of one of the key populations that continues to be particularly badly affected by HIV AIDS, namely women and girls who inject drugs. But the fact that you are taking services to people who use and as well as inject drugs, or you are taking services to consider centers is also indicative of the fact that we want to be very inclusive and ensure that we get services to people wherever they are. The training manual launch, they noted, will address the specific need of women who inject drugs aimed at helping to overcome these challenges. Today we celebrate two major milestones. One is the critical development components by launching some documents that are for capacity building and for targeting towards equalizing and ending HIV as a threat by 2030. Today we continue to mobilize our community in solidarity helping those living with HIV and those affected by HIV to deal with stigma and discrimination and support them to know the existing services from social and economic perspective. It also featured the candlelight memorial in honor of those who died in the course of helping people who live with HIV and those who died as a result of HIV and AIDS. Basi Taipa, NTA News. Meanwhile, selected schools and rural communities in Kebbi State have benefited from water facilities courtesy of the United States Agency for International Development in collaboration with the Green Habitat Initiative. Usman Abdullahi who has more. A project for improved sustainability of integrated water sanitation and hygiene services were executed in the selected local governments fundamentally to improve hygiene and access to portable water in the host communities while inaugurating the eye wash facilities in Kalgu. The facilitator Sadiq Abubakar Guluma and his associates posited that the intervention was aimed at providing access to basic water supply to the rural communities as well as sanitation and hygiene in schools and health centers. We are very motivated by the fact that a lot of our people suffer from waterborne diseases such as cholera and dysentery and we are hoping that the provision of this portable water is going to change that narrative and our people will be healthier. The Permanent Secretary, Kebbi State Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning, Aisha Usman, commended the effort of the Green Habitat Initiative and USAID for the extensive work and impact to the various communities in the state. I want to assure Green Habitat and all other partners working in the state that we are always ready to provide funding for all the development programs in the state. Some of the benefiting communities said the gesture came at the right time. Highlight of the event was the commissioning of the eye wash facilities and demonstration of hand washing practice using food operated hand washing points. Usman Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and his running mate, Yusuf Dekti Baba Ahmed, have released their presidential campaign manifesto titled, My Pact 
conflict with Nigerians. In the document released Saturday night by the party leadership, the candidate and his running mate have promised to offer honest and competent leadership to deliver on seven areas of priority, including security, production, restructuring, technological innovations, infrastructural revolution, human capital development, and a foreign policy which protects the interest of Nigerians. The manifesto states the vision of the Obi-Beti candidacy as a secure, united and prosperous Nigeria which works for everyone and that realizes the hope of black people of the world. It promises to run a government of national unity, bringing together for the task at hand all competent, honest and diligent Nigerians, irrespective of their political affiliations. Meanwhile, the People's Redemption Party has made a clarification that neither the PRP nor its presidential candidate, Kola Abiola, have entered into an alliance with the Africa Action Alliance, AAC, or any political party, describing the report as untrue and ridiculous. A statement by the Assistant National Publicity Secretary of the party urges the public to disregard this falsehood, reaffirming that its presidential candidate Kola Abiola and his running mate Haro Zegwa are still in the race in the 2023 elections. Meanwhile, the APC Presidential Campaign Council has described as shocking the continuous announcement by Arise News promoting the participation of its presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in its presidential town hall meeting scheduled to hold on 4th December 2022, despite the council's earlier statement that the said candidate will not be available. The council says it has noticed that Arise News has also been running a campaign on the so-called constitutional duty of the presidential candidate to participate in its debate by dubiously citing section 22 of the constitution of nigeria on the obligation of the mass media it adds that the apc presidential candidate has his own schedule of campaign activities and other agreements within and outside nigeria one of such events is his is a scheduled event for Monday, December 5, 2022, at Chatham House in London, where he will speak on security, economy and foreign policy. Meanwhile, when a person is arrested for an alleged involvement in criminal offence, it is expected that such a suspect will undergo the process of inv investigation. There will be more on that after this time out. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. And for more on Panorama, we'll be joining Chineye in Enugu. It's good to see you, Chineye. You, Chineye. It's good to see you too, Naja Atu. Thank you so much for joining us in Enugu. Mob action or jungle justice, which is a public form of extrajudicial killing, seems to be making a systematic return in Nigeria. As latest actions of irate mobs, especially in Enugu State, is a pointer to the fact that people are poised to take the laws into their hands rather than follow due process. Mina Adobe Okobasi explains the reason behind this ugly trend. Public humiliation, beating or summary execution by an angry mob, according to the law, are all tantamount to jungle justice and is punishable by law. With this in mind, the sudden increase in cases of jungle justice calls for worry. 
Just recently, a widow was allegedly stripped naked by youths in Enugu over alleged harvesting of snails from a sacred forest for sale to cater for her four children and was paraded in her nudity. As if that wasn't enough, Enugu State also witnessed another mob action. This time, two young men alleged to have robbed POS operators at the independence layout area of Enugu State was also stripped naked and set ablaze. <laughs> Some individuals and human rights groups have, however, reacted separately to these incidences, condemning the act in totality as everyone remains innocent until proven otherwise. It says very clearly in Section 33 of the Black Constitution, it guarantees the right to life to every Nigerian. The Constitution also says in that section that nobody has a right to snuff the life out of any other person living in Nigeria except in accordance with the provisions of an order. Court. In as much as I am totally against anything crime and criminality, nothing justifies jungle justice. The best thing would have been for the people to uh, hand the suspect over to the security agencies to do investigations. The Law Enforcement Agency also condemns the act in its entirety, promising to commence discreet investigation as well as fish out and prosecute culprits. You are empowered by law to arrest that person. But the law is also very clear. When you do that, don't hesitate to hand the person over or person or persons over to the Law Enforcement Agency and in this sense, the police. For the police to do the need to investigate and ensure that whatsoever accusation, whatsoever observation you may have made is established and that the person faces the consequences of his act in the most legal manner. Respondents, however, reiterated that no matter the circumstances resulting to self help to carry out acts of jungle justice without recourse to extant laws and the criminal administration system is totally condemnable and tantamount to the commission of crime in itself. In any go, Minna and Toby Corbusy, NT News. And that report forms our background for discussion on Panorama today. And with me in the studio to expand the discourse is Mr. Gostheim Ukafo. He's a legal luminary and the National Vice Chairman, Police Community Relations Committee, Southeast Zone. Sir, you're welcome to Panorama. Thank you very much. Okay. Sir, they said um, security is everybody's business. And the law enforcement agents keep encouraging citizens to report suspicious persons to them for them to... Um, carry out the appropriate dispensation of justice. Why then do some people like to involve themselves in jungle justice or extrajudicial killings? It's because they don't know what the law says. In the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, Section 33 specifically, provides that it provides for right to life. And nobody has the right to take the life of every, any citizen of Nigeria is set in accordance with the provision of the Constitution. And what the Constitution says is that every allegation must be investigated. First of all, Section 36, you will investigate it. And Section 36, Subsection 5 says that every crime, the person has the presumption of innocent. You don't have to condemn him until the police has investigated the alleged act, then the police, if they find prima facie evidence that the person committed the crime, they will then prosecute him, charge him to court, and the court will not prosecute him. If the court finds him guilty, the court will convict him and send him to prison. So that is the procedure. So when people now jettison this procedure, they will resort to jungle justice. And that is taking the laws into your hand. Okay, so what does the law say uh, about these people who involve themselves in these acts? Yes, if you, the, the law is no respecter of anybody. If you take jungle justice, if you take the laws into your hand, you yourself who have taken the laws into your hand have violated the law. And the, the law will take its course. You will be arrested, 
you will be prosecuted and they find guilty, you will be sentenced to prison. Okay, sir, whenever a jungle justice or extrajudicial killing is mentioned, the story of the four students of the University of Portacourt who were lynched after they were falsely accused of theft in Alu River State readily comes to mind. How can such people get justice and how can they be compensated? Yes, the Constitution of Nigeria provides for adequate compensation when there has been a victim an innocent person because the emphasis here is innocence when you are innocent you are righteous you did not commit any crime and the society has somehow uh, interfered with your innocence if you are not there your family will be adequately compensated compensated proportionately to the things done to you. So the four students in reference what the law expects is that government will adequately compensate the family. Yeah. So to most, them. Okay, sir. So most times when these incidents happen, you see a lot of people filming the horror scene with their phones and up uploading them on the internet instead of intervening. How can this be discouraged? What they will do instead of filming it, you intervene. That is, as a good Samaritan, as a good citizen, the Constitution provides for civic responsibility, civic responsibilities of every citizen. One of the civic responsibility is for you, if you see injustice going on, you try to intervene to stop or further occurrence of the injustice. Instead of feeling it, go, intervene, and stop it. Nip it in the board. Okay, sir. By way of advice, um, how do you advise people who are impatient in following the dictates of the law? The advice is that don't take the laws into your hands. And always also be law abiding. Follow the law. Whatever the law says, that is the advice. Okay, sir. How do you tell people to begin to have value for human life? You will know that life has no duplicate. Life has no replica, and as such, you should have value for human life. Life is sacrosanct. Don't joke with human life. Human being is not a chicken. Human being is not an animal. Human being is created by God in his image. And as such, you should respect God and help us with value for human beings. Okay, sir. Now, I'm talking about security. Uh, what's your take on um, such issues happening around, especially in the southeast zone now? Uh, yes, in the southeast zone, I want to use this medium to advise the governor's forum. They have to have a meeting with all the traditional rulers and president of their unions. First of all, the bush near the main road. There will be about 25 meters gap on the road. Make sure the bush are cut. If they can't cut it, make the owners of those bush set them ablaze by fire and control the fire. So that when you are driving on the road, you'll be able to see inside. Make sure that there is nothing that obstructs you. Who locks always lock around the road? They will hide there. And come up. But if the bushes are cleared, then the hulas will have no hiding place any longer. That first thing they will do. Secondly, the government forum of South Zone, they had a meeting last time, and the chairman of the forum, Governor of Ebony State, said that before December 1st, they have agreed they will have a uniform security outfit called the Bubago that we, there will be joint patrol in all the federal roads. Today is December uh, 4th. I've not seen anything. Does it mean that the meeting they said and the pronouncement bed that they have not gone back to sleep? So that is, they have to know that every human being is held accountable by what he says. Mm. So let the governors of South East sit up. Mm. Let them know that life has no replica. Let them sit up. To, they are the first security man in their states. Okay, sir. Let them provide lives and security. Okay, sir. Why do the uh, law enforcement agents make efforts to secure the citizens? I, I know that citizens also have a role to play in securing themselves. 
Yes, they have to make it for there are various ways they can do it. The citizens themselves also have to take various precautionary measures to secure themselves. You know the time you go out, you know porous areas, you know dangerous areas, those dangerous areas you try in as much as possible to avoid it. You know the time you will go, the time you come out, they will do that. The government also will take security as their paramount project. They don't take security as a project. They have to take it. That is why every governor is giving security fund. That security fund, what do they do with it? They will provide adequate vehicles for security agencies, including the vigilantes. They will also uh, uh, arm them because you cannot take security with bare hands. They must arm them. They will also liaise with government to provide ammunition for vigilantes. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'll be speaking with Mr. Godstein Oka for his uh, legal luminary and the National Vice Chairman, Police Community Relations Committee, Southeast Zone. I will now go back to our sports update. The main bowl of the Steve Ikechi Stadium at Saba came alive Sunday morning as a 30th event of the 2022 National Welcome to Africa, the land of ancient civilization. Dance now, 
From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NT International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere, we provide a company.